Heavenly Father, I come, don't have much to offer, Holy One, I'm humbled by all that you've done, mm -hmm. and even though I walk through the valley, oh, and I don't have to fear, no. Call me from my sorrow to gladness, and I have what more could I want? So raise my faith a little higher, set my spirit on fire. Lord, we're asking you to move. You're the God of restoration, the one who gives salvation. Lord, let me. Come on. 
Well, praise the Lord this morning. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We want to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. This is the day that the Lord made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We say God bless you. This is Pastor Sessom, senior pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. Amen. Glory to God. We do have a word from the Lord for you. Amen. Praise God. First of all, we want to thank God, amen, and thank you, amen, for allowing us into your home. We do realize that there's a lot of places you could have been today, but you decided, amen, glory to God, to sit down at the master's table, hallelujah, where the feast of the Lord is going on, hallelujah, to enjoy the good word of the kingdom with us, praise God, hallelujah, amen. We do want to, amen, glory to God, uh, get right on into this message, amen, glory to God. For if so, if you will, will you please open up your Bibles to the book of Acts, the book of Acts, Acts chapter two, amen, the Acts of the Apostles. And while you're turning there, I'll go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for your word. This is the day you made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, we ask your anointing on the preacher, your anointing on the teacher. We pr pray your blessing upon those that would hear what your spirit is saying unto the church. We thank you. Now, we come against every foe to faith, any and every spirit that will try to hinder this service. We rebuke and we cast down every, every spirit that's against us in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father, for good success in this endeavor. And those that agree, say amen. Amen. Glory to God. We're in the book of Acts. Amen. Glory to God. And we're in chapter two. And uh, we can begin in amen at verse four. Uh, 40, amen, one, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter two and verse 41. Bless God. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. We thank you for your blessing the word. I want to bring a message today. And I'll get, I've given it a title that we should avoid doing things our way. And if I had a subtopic just for the sake of simplicity, I would title it Continue in the Word. Continue in the Word. But my overarching thought is that we need to avoid or resist the temptation to do things our way. Amen. This message that I have, I believe it was birthed out of some work I was doing in my yard the other day. Amen. I've got myself a mature avocado tree that I've planted several years ago. And uh, this year it began to bear some really good fruit, nice size, juicy, luscious, delicious. Amen. And then I, with the winds that were blowing, that blow through the Inland Empire, the tree had gotten so tall, I was afraid that the tree was going to snap in that it was tall and it's already uh, coming up on an angle. <laughs> so I said, well, I don't want to mess up my property or the, my neighbor's fencing or anything like that. So I pruned it. I cut the top off. I topped it. And so the tree is probably about 20, close to 20 feet tall. And my understanding is, as I did research the matter prior to doing it, is that if you, that you can cut the top off the avocado tree and it won't kill it. It'll just cause it to to spread out wider versus growing taller. And they said that that's something that I could do to maintain its height. I can prune it on an annual basis. And that 
you know, it, it should uh, cause the fruit to be more luscious. And also it's easier to harvest in that it's within my reach. I don't have or grasp. I don't have to, amen, climb the tree. But then upon further study, I, did, I found that a second avocado tree will cause you to have a greater yield or a, 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 a better harvest. And so we went and purchased a, another avocado tree, a smaller one. This is a, it's a smaller avocado tree and it's a different type. Amen. Both avocados, but one's a type A, one type B. And they, with the cross pollination, I don't want to go into all of that, but it causes you to have a higher percentage of yield on your crop. And so I went to planting it. I went to digging the hole, amen, and putting it in there. Glory to God, planting it, soil uh, amendment and watering it and everything like that. But and when we purchased it, it came with a stake attached to it, a long piece of wood. But the issue was I was in my smaller, my more compact car and it would not fit in the car with the stake on it. So we with the stake as long as it was. And so we had the gentleman at the store at the nursery to cut the stake down and then further. And so we got it home and then. Um, upon my attempting to put it in the ground, I pulled the stake out thinking that, you know, it's a nice size plant, nice size tree, excuse me. It should have been able to stand up on its own. Uh, I would use the word volition, but its own by itself. Amen. But uh, <clears throat> what I noticed was the tree began to slump over. And that it was its trunk was not yet stiff enough, was not yet, the tree was not yet mature enough to stand on its own, stand upright on its own. And so I had this other uh, uh, pole that I was going to use. I said, well, I'll put this big one on there uh, because in, at some point in time, this tree is going to get that size. But I could not get, to, I could not affix it to this new tree close enough and so the tree began to bend, it began to be out of shape. And what I had to hurry up and do before I, I caused some form of permanent damage to my brand new avocado tree, I had to hurry and run to uh, Home Depot and purchase a stake that was long enough and small enough that where I could affix it directly to the trunk of this new tree to make to ensure that once that it grew straight, amen, glory to God. And I, I learned something that I believe the Lord was speaking to me uh, or showing me something through that. I'm not saying it was a prophetic message or anything like that there, but I'm just saying I, I, there was, there's a truth behind that, amen, that I want to, to deal with today, amen, glory to God. We, 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 we oftentimes individuals, amen, glory to God, they, they, they're walking with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. They're doing what they uh, uh, are supposed to be doing. But then all of a sudden they get this desire or this temptation to do things their way. A amen. Glory to God. Perhaps what necessitated the change is they've uh, taken on some new venture or, or something, something else outside of church or something like that. And to a man facilitate or to uh, 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 to be successful in this new venture, they begin, amen, glory to God, to, to sacrifice, amen, the word of God, amen, glory to God. So this, the word of God has to be, is the sacrifice, amen, glory to God. They don't continue in the word, amen, like they should, praise God. And so we need to, I need you to see what we read in, in the book of Acts was the, when, when the, when the, when the, when the people that the apostles had preached to uh, when they received the word, they received it gladly. They got baptized. Uh, souls began to be added to them. In other words, there was growth in the scripture lets us know that they continued steadfastly. Amen. In the apostles doctrine and in fellowship, 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 fellowship. Amen. See that that stake. Amen. That, that I had to go get. It represented the need to remain close, amen, glory to God, to remain tethered, amen, to, to stay connected, praise God, hallelujah, or you will come up, your stuff won't come up right, it will come up crooked, it'll come up bent, praise God, 
Hallelujah. It said they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Amen. Glory to God. In other words, they didn't switch up. Amen. The word that they received, they kept walking in that word. They kept studying that word. They kept learning that word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They're, they're in, in fellowship. In other words, they, they wanted to be around one another. They wanted to be near one another. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then it says, and in breaking of bread, they were sharing their substance and even in prayer. So when you look at this, you see that there was a maturing. There was a continual. There was a growth. Amen. Occurring. Because they were conti they continued in the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, you need to understand, amen, that the local church, amen, like our church, we have, there's a mission. We have a mission, amen. We have a mission. And our mission is not just, amen, uh, winning souls, but the mission also includes making disciples or maturing saints, amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter four, amen, glory to God. In verse, amen, glory to God, uh, verse 11, it says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what reason? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen, glory to God. And so the mission of the church, amen, glory to God, is not just to get folks to confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but to grow, to be discipled, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God, to mature them so for the work of the ministry, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. I need you to understand that the first thing in the book of Acts, the first thing that was mentioned about the church was faithfulness to attend, A amen. It says they continued steadfastly. Amen. In the apostle doctrine. So they were, there was a faithfulness to attend. There was a faithfulness to receive teaching. Amen. You need to understand that a church attendance is linked with growth. Amen. The word of God links those two together. Attendance and growth. Attendance and growth. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I know this is a strange message for me to be preaching. Amen. Especially during while we're about this time where we're social distancing. Amen. Glory to God. And we're in the in, in, near getting near the end of this pandemic. Amen. Glory to God. But be, and we're doing church. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, Y'all know virtually. Amen. Praise God. But I need you to understand. Glory to God. Even while we're doing virtual church. Amen. Glory to God. You got to be in church, amen, because you are the church, amen, glory to God. In other words, you've got to fix it somehow in your mind that even while I'm watching the church, watching my pastor preach on my cell phone or on my laptop or on my tablet, and some of y'all ain't got fancy, you're watching me on television, you got to still be in church. Somebody say amen to that, amen. You got to fix your mind, hallelujah. You got to flip that switch that I'm not just, you know, I got, I got, I'm not going to be jumping up getting ice cream and cookies and stuff while church is on, praise God. I'm going to steadfastly be in church. I'm going to focus, Lord of God, so I don't miss something. Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm starting some trouble this morning, praise God. Hallelujah. So to, to mature, especially during this pandemic, it really shows where you are and where your heart is as it pertains to the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And I ain't telling y'all to get all dressed up and, and things like that, but that may not be a bad idea because it gets you in, the, in, in church mode. Praise God. But, amen, glory to God, you need to do whatever you have to do to stay focused, praise God, to where you don't have distractions, just like if we were in church, glory to God. We don't have this, we try to minimize distractions. We don't want to, come on, we don't want to distract one another. We want to be to make it accept the environment or the atmosphere such that everybody can learn the word of God. Somebody say amen to that. So, you, you got to be in, you got to be in church, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. And when it mentions the apostles doctrine, it means that you had to be where the apostles were in order to receive. Praise God. That's what it really meant. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's turn somewhere. Let's go to first Timothy chapter two. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we understand. Amen. The purpose of the preacher. Amen. And the purpose. Amen. Of being steadfast. Amen. Glory to God. And our mission is to create is to make disciples. Amen. Go to God. First Timothy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First Timothy chapter two. 
Bless God. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter two and verse one. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions and givings of thanks be made for all men is dealing with prayer in public worship. It says for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our savior, mm, God, our savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And then we can go to verse seven, where unto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. That word verity means truth. Amen. And then if we were go to one, another place, amen, I'm not going to say one more, but another place we can go to the book of John. I'm just trying to lay a foundation, somebody. The book of John, chapter eight. Thank you, Jesus. And verse 30, John, chapter eight, verse 30. It says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Mm -hmm. In other words, at this particular point, we have converts. A amen, somebody. We have converts. Souls were one to Christ. We have converts. Then said Jesus unto those Jews which believed on him. Amen. Glory to God. If ye what? Continue in my word. Mm -hmm. Then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Once again, glory to God, there's a the, the, the theme in this of this sermon is the continuing in the word of God. Hallelujah. It's the avoidance, amen, of thinking that you've got there already, glory to God, and begin to take matters in your own hands, praise God, hallelujah. Separating yourself, hitting and missing, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory. Let me, let me tell you something. When you miss, you miss, praise God, because man does not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, every single word of God. Amen. Glory to God. And so he says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. In other words, right now, and initially, he's teaching, telling them, you're just a convert, praise God. But I'm trying to get you to another level to where you're a disciple. Amen. So a disciple root word being having some discipline. Amen. One taught a certain discipline praise God it's like I my, my background was in electronics and uh, electric electricity amen glory to God I had to go to school to get disciplined amen glory to God on how to use and be safe amen glory to God and troubleshoot and hook up stuff and wire up stuff amen glory. it's a discipline Jesus said if you continue in my word, come on, somebody. If you don't try to run off on your own thing, glory to God. He says, then you are my disciples indeed. Glory to God. He says, and then you will have an intimate relationship with the truth, which is in fact the word of God and which is Christ. Praise God. He says, and this truth, amen, will make you free. It shall make you free. It shall make you free. Amen. Glory to God. And so we need to understand if you continue in the word of God, that's when you are a disciple. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm trying to lay this foundation. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, you, know, you need to understand a disciple is one who continues 
in the word. Amen. A disciple is not, glory to God, a spiritual buddy. Praise God. He's not even a mentor, even though we advocate for mentorship. He, a, 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 a disciple, glory to God, discipleship, amen, glory to God. Discipleship is not a being under a mentor, glory to God. The main place for discipleship is in the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the main, I've got to go there. The main means of discipleship is teaching the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said it's the teaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So now if the word can make disciples, glory to God, more word makes more should make more disciples. Amen. That that the way I see it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you got to understand becoming mature in the word, become a disciple. Glory to God of Christ is really impossible without faithful attendance. Praise God. It's, it's impossible without faithful attention to the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. I know I'm, I'm getting under somebody's skin. Glory to God. But I got to work this thing. I, I came with a message today. Praise God. See, God showed me something about that tree. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When the farther it was away from that straight stake. Amen. That was supposed to was was uh, 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 intended or designed to support it. It bent over. It slumped over. It could not support itself. In the name of Jesus, turn with me, if you will, to the gospel according to Mark. Amen. Mark chapter four. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to work this. We're going to preach today. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. I feel the Holy Ghost already. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter four. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. And he at Mark chapter four, verse 13. And he said, uh, uh I got to back up. I got to back up. Let me back up to verse 11. Mark chapter four, verse 11. And he said unto them, unto you is given to know. Come on. Unto you is given to know. Remember, he says, if you uh, continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. He says unto you is given to know. He's talking to his 12 apostles, amen, or his 12 disciples. He says, unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Why? That seeing they may see and not perceive. Come on. In other words, what he's saying, if these folks are not believers, if they have not committed themselves to Christ as their savior, Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They will not understand. It was designed. So you can't you just cannot perceive. Amen. Spiritual. Amen. Knowledge. Unless you're a child of God. Praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. And then in verse 13, he says unto them, <clears throat> know ye not this parable. You have to understand in verse 10, they asked him, what did you mean? So he's going to answer them. Glory to God. Know ye not this parable. And how then will you know all? Parables. The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes. Satan cometh, excuse me, immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Amen, somebody. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended, offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word 
and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it. There's a lot of folks say they receive it, but don't adhere to it and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 30 fold, some 60 and some a hundred. Amen. Verse 21 says, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. Verse 23, are you with me? If anyone or if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Are you with me still? And then in verse 24, he says unto them, take heed what you hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Amen. Glory to God. You need to understand this here parable is the key parable of, of, of the whole word. Amen. This is a, the key. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. You, 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 if we were to, if we really wanted to, we could get, we can delve into this particular parable and we can pull off, pull out several doctrines. We can pull out grace. We can pull out faith. We use it for healing, prosperity, maturity. Amen. We could even, I'm going to use it today talking about the church. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, there's, there's some things that this particular parable, some, some truths that this parable teaches us. I'm going to work this. Number one, it teaches us, amen, that, uh, something about God. Hallelujah. It tells us that God is, in fact, a giver. Praise the Lord, somebody. It's a, he's a giver, praise God. It's letting us know that the, it's the nature of God to give and not to steal. Praise God. That's God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. James chapter one, verse 17 says every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. God gives. He does not steal. Uh, it, can get, it gives us the nature of Satan. We can find in this parable in the nature of Satan is he's a thief. Come on. He's a thief. He's a thief. He's a thief. Amen. You see, the devil ain't never created nothing but a bunch of chaos. He ain't created nothing. He can only attempt to steal what God then gave you. Amen. D the devil uses demons. He uses circumstances and he uses people. Amen. To steal from you, to steal your joy. Come on, somebody to steal your purpose, to steal your eyesight. I'm talking about your spiritual eyesight. And in this case, he steals the word of God. Praise God. In John 10 and 10, it lets us know that the thief cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God says, I came that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I'm here to tell somebody. I want to. Con I want to convince somebody. I want to. Amen. If I want. I want. I'm. I'm trying to help somebody. You need to stay connected. Praise God. You need to stay connected. You need to continue in the Word of God. You need to resist the temptation to do things on your own. I'm here to tell you some. Tell somebody something. If you don't resist this temptation to do things your way, your stuff ain't gonna come out right. <laughs> I'll say that, say it just like this here. It will not come out right. I feel like preaching now, but but I'm gonna deal with this. You see, I, I I see that there's a there's a, there's been a lot of deception. Praise God. There's been a lot of false prophecy. There's we we a lot of preachers just then popped up out of nowhere. Half of them, glory to God, hallelujah, ain't following their own pastor no more. Glory to God. So now all of a sudden, glory to God, I guess to augment their income. Praise God. We got all these internet prophets. Amen. We got Facebook prophecies. We got YouTube prophecies. And, and you can tell. 
tell when the, 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 the false ones because everybody got a dream. Come on, somebody. It always start off, I've had a dream. Come on, somebody. Or I had this dream last night. And they want you to, glory to God, get involved with their dream. I'm going to tell you something. I had a dream last night, too. I had a dream the night before that. I had a dream. With, huh? Glory to God. Some of them dreams are because of something I ate. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Glory. Or my back was hurting. Maybe some of them dreams was because of the Motrin I took to get the pain off. Everybody got a dream. And we got folks, glory to God, instead of opening up their own Bibles, learning the word of God, listening to their pastor. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Running off with these crazy Folk, that, that when, you, when you listen to half the, you can tell they're trying to figure out how to act like they prophesying because they can't. What did God say? They don't ever just come straight to the point and tell you what God said. It's always all is in gobbledygook junk. And then when you look at the word of God, they're taking the thing all out of context. It don't even make sense. It's the devil using people to bring confusion and fear into your life. I, I, I was, as I was putting this, uh, this together, as I was putting this together, a word from the word of God came to my heart, a scripture, a set of verses. It was found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. You need to stay connected, connected to the word. Watch this. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 says, we have. In other words, when, you, when it says we have, it says we already got. <laughs> we already got a more sure word of prophecy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen to it. This is, this is coming from the Bible. This ain't I had a dream. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19 says we have also a more sure Word of prophecy. Watch this. He, and, and there's a semicolon there. And in other words, he ain't done yet. Peter's not done. It says, whereunto you do well that you take heed. What is it saying? It's saying take heed to what is written in the word. Not somebody's dream. Not somebody that just popped up out of nowhere. All of a sudden they're a prophet. Oh God, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Whereunto you do well. Do you want to do well? <laughs> Everybody should want to do well. Well, the word of God is letting us know we have a more accurate, <laughs> a more specific, come on, a more powerful, huh? Word of prophecy. It says, whereunto you do well that you take heed or you listen to it <laughs> or you stay connected to it huh? That, or you continue in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to understand. Hallelujah. He says that you, you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Come on. In other words, the word of God, hallelujah, will not keep you in the dark. We don't need to be concerned about somebody's dark prophecy. The word of God is light. Amen. Matter of fact, the word of God tells us in Philippians, don't even be thinking on crazy, dark stuff. Don't be thinking on scary stuff. Come on, somebody. It be telling us, don't be, we don't know. Prophecy comes to edify, to build you up, and to prepare you. Glory to God. It says, wherein do you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Watch this. Knowing this. Come on, somebody. Knowing this, that no prophecy of the scripture 
is of any private interpretation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost about right now about to help me finish this thing off. Glory to God. And so when we're dealing with this parable of the sower, amen, and glory to God. And this my message today about continuing in the word of God. Hallelujah. It's the resisting the temptation to take things into your own hands or to do things your own way. Praise God. Hallelujah. you got to understand God is a blesser. That's God's nature. God don't never want to leave you in the same condition you started in. He wants to improve on you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He does it for his name's sake. Come on, somebody. He does it, glory to God, because it brings glory to him. Glory to God. He's proud to see your life improved. He's proud. To, it makes him glad. Glory to God. The Bible says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Glory to God. He wants it because it brings glory. To, it's, a, it's a good look on his reputation. As your heavenly father. Don't be deceived. By false prophecy. See Satan to use other folk. To take advantage of you. I said Satan to use other folk. To take advantage of you. Hey you all twisted up. You know and, and questioning stuff that you already know to be the truth already. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so in this particular parable of the sower. Praise God. The minister, in this case, is the sower. Can I get done? His responsibility is to teach the word of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. The, the, the pastor's main responsibility is to feed the church of God. I said the pastor's main responsibility is to feed the church of God. And he's supposed to cover it, the word of God, equally to everybody and without partiality. The Bible says, glory to God, in Acts chapter uh, 20, it says, take heed, in verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over with the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Come on, somebody. To feed the church of God, which he, ha which he hath, who he, Jesus, hath purchased with his own blood. In other words, your preacher, your pastor has a responsibility not to make you feel good. He has a responsibility, glory to God, hallelujah, not to, my God, entertain you, but his job is to teach you the word of God. You know the problem in a lot of our churches, we don't want to sit down to sound teaching. We don't want to be taught. We want something quick and easy, praise God. That's why we turn over to YouTube. That's why we go to Facebook and look Look up these old stupid, crazy prophecies, glory to God, the prophet liars, glory to God, hallelujah, because we too lazy to get into our own word, hallelujah, and see what God has already said. That's my strength, my help comes from the word of God, my help coming from the Lord, hallelujah, the pastor's Main responsibility is to feed the church. Glory to Jesus' name. That's how come glory. Asha. That's how come glory to God. When I preach and when I teach, I give you scripture upon scripture because I have to build a foundation for everything. Every every word I give you, I got to prove glory to God. Hallelujah. What I say to you is of the Lord because it's coming directly from His Word. Remember, Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter one verse nineteen. We have. Have a more sure word of prophecy. It's the Bible. Somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You want to do well? Stick with it. Continue in it. Don't veer off from it. Hallelujah. Don't get antsy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't, don't, don't run off with folk who say they all deep. You know, it was a whole bunch of deep folks. Glory to God. Talking about who the next. Some crazy, somebody got crazy. One of them same prophets that was talking about the dark days. She had not heard prophesied that Barack Obama was going to be the president again. That's when I heard the cuckoo clock going off. <laughs> and it was time to unsubscribe. <laughs> Cuckoo, straight cuckoo. There's another one, glory to God. He didn't prophesy Trump was going to be the president. And instead of humbling himself, he's so fit. And, and admitting he made a mistake, he's so full of pride. Now he's telling other lies to cover the first lie. 
Ain't got folks sitting up in them big old churches. Ain't got all kind of subscribers. When we have a more sure word of prophecy, which is the Bible. Praise the Lord. The only place I've seen in the Bible of Trump is here when the last Trump going to sound. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And it was not talking about Mr. Donald. It was talking about a trumpet or moreover a shofar. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me get done. So the minister, the preacher, the pastor, his main responsibility is to feed the church of God. And he's supposed to give them a balanced meal. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then we have the seed. Come on. So the minister is sowing something. What's he sowing? He's sowing seed. What's the seed? The seed is the word of God. Come on. He's not supposed to be sowing a dream. <laughs> he ain't going to be sowing a dream. He ain't supposed to be sowing, I think. He won't be so and I know because the Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. He won't be sowing what the word says. Praise God. Now, so we've got the sower. Or the preacher. We've got the seed, <laughs> which is the word. And then we have the ground. Come on. We got the ground. We got the soil. Many times I've heard in Christian circles that this parable is not called the parable of the sower. Matter of fact, when I was in school, I wrote my, my, my thesis statement on the incorruptible seed. And I utilized the parable of the sower as part of it. Come on. And really, the parable of the sower is really the parable of the soil. <laughs> it's really the parable of of the soil come on because the soil or the ground in this text amen is the heart of the hearer and i need you to understand that all four types of ground all four types of soil represent the four types of hearts of a believer amen and I'm going to tell you something. All these four types of soil, all these four types of ground come to church. Amen. You see, the, the, when you look at this particular parable, when it says some got a, a 30 and some 60 and some 100 fold. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to understand that. Amen. The increase was not predicated upon the seed. It's the word. It was not predicated on the preacher he's the same you got to understand something see god never changes satan never changes he's a thief he's a liar he comes to come on somebody that's him the seed the word never changes it's the incorruptible seed amen glory to god the minister who preaches should be preaching the word so he so increase is not predicated on him unless he ain't teaching the word but the key to this parable the key to increase is the heart it's the heart it's the heart it's the heart it's the heart the heart of the believer is the only variable Come on, somebody. It's the only variable in this parable. Amen. Glory to God. But see, I've been teaching y'all about renewing your mind. I've been teaching you about neuroplasticity. I've been teaching you you can rewire your brain. You can do, you can do this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, bad ground can become good ground. It don't have to stay that way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to understand as I get ready to close this thing out. Hallelujah. When I first started this, hallelujah, I say I, I told you that the apostles in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They didn't veer off into their own trip. 
<laughs> they didn't uh, they didn't listen to folk glory to God hallelujah glory to God they wasn't that they, they, they didn't know what they were talking about they trusted glory to God the apostles they trusted hallelujah the, the teachers of the word they trusted the preachers praise God hallelujah so they stayed in it praise God hallelujah glory to God see what don't make sense to me when I see one on this side of the church, glory to God, benefiting from the word of God and see somebody on the other side sitting up in the same church, getting the same word, not benefiting, glory to God, that means the problem ain't the word. The problem is the person. The problem is the heart. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a good thing I'm standing up up here preaching. Glory to God. So they continued steadfastly. Hallelujah, glory to God. See, the devil, years ago, my daughter, glory to God, I was teaching her how to drive. <laughs> Took her to this church parking lot at the end of the street. I'm going to teach her how to drive. I'm going to teach Tiffany how to drive. She might be watching. I'm going to get in trouble. But I was teaching Tiffany how to drive. And I was showing her what to do in the parking lot. And all of a sudden, Tiffany said, I got it, Daddy. She put her foot on that gas pedal. The car went airborne. And they, I know the car was in the middle of the street. And then she hit the brake. Like, uh-oh. You see, sometimes folk, they're, they're, they're not where they think they are. They're not where they think they are. You see, this pandemic, it done brought out a lot of stuff. <laughs> it, sh it should be, it's showing me where certain people under my watch care or under my oversight are really, are really are. Come on, somebody. It's showing me because glory to God, we've been separated from one another where we can't come in the same building for over this. This, this is our anniversary. <laughs> this is our anniversary. One year, one whole year. But I noticed that there's some folk that stayed connected. They stayed close by the word of God. My preaching is like that steak that I had that I made real close to my new hallelujah uh, uh, guaca, uh, avocado. Yeah, I'm make some guacamole. My avocado tree. They still stayed close by. And though the winds of pa pandemic was blowing, come on. And though the earthquake was shaking, they still standing. They still, matter of fact, they're in a better position in all kind of ways than they were before because they heard the word. They had ears to hear. They continued in the word of God. They disciplined themselves. They, they, they took their phones and, 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 and did it so when pastor come on, the phone ring. <laughs> My pastor is preaching. I can't make it by myself. My success is predicated upon the word of God that comes from my man of God. And so, where some are faltering, some are advancing and are maturing. Hallelujah. It said in the book of Acts, they continued steadfastly in the word of God, in the apostles doctrine. And then I told you to continue again in John chapter eight. He says, if you abide or if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And then he said in this parable of the sower, if anybody got ears to hear, <laughs> let him hear. In other words, what he said, if you heard, Keep on hearing. <laughs> See, we like to use this word in our ebonic vernacular. Uh, I heard that. No, you need to do more than heard that. You need to keep hearing that. Huh? We need to understand something. When we looked at each type of ground, improved the long hurt, the, 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 how, can, how can I say this here? When you look at each type of ground, the more they heard, they did better than previous, than the ones who gave up. You see, 
when folk give up on the word, you giving up on you, 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 you really you gave up on hope. A amen. When you start venturing off into other little places, you messing yourself up because you're causing theories. You're causing doubts. You're causing different things that war against the word of God to be sown into your heart. You're messing up your own soil. So despite the deceitfulness of riches, despite good times, bad, some people kept on hearing and they became good ground. See, your heart is the key. Your heart is the key. Amen. You got to take heed what you hear. You got to watch what you hear, because with the same measure you use it's going to be measured back to you again. And then this is what's deep. The individual who can hear more is going to be given them. A amen. When you start hearing, when you start heeding, when you start getting revelation, glory to God, you're going to find out glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. More is going to be given unto you. Praise God. But those individuals that disconnect. Hallelujah. You need to get reconnected. You need to get reconnected once again. See, see. You're the one that's responsible to make or break the maturity barrier. That tree, the reason it slumped over, it wasn't true. It wasn't mature enough. It needed to stay connected because it couldn't really stand on its own. See, there's individuals who thought they could stand on their own. But when this pandemic came, you could tell they wasn't stand. They couldn't stand on their own. They came. They, they look. They fake like they stand. We, I can see it. They're not standing on their own. You need to get back connected. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the one that's responsible. Hallelujah. He says, so, so how do you get there? It's based on what the one who has what? Ears to hear. Amen. Do you have ears to hear? See, you do you give God authority or do you give Satan authority? Amen. Do you give God authority to give you or do you give Satan the authority to steal from you? Let me deal with that. Maybe you didn't hear that. Do you give see you give God authority to give more to you or you give Satan more authority to steal what God gave you? See, when you start listening to these crazy things, see, 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 let me see the enemy throws souls that crazy stuff out there to bring doubt to the word of God, to bring doubt to your mind. You can't bring doubt to the word, bring doubt to your heart. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you have hearing ears. See, it's not an issue of God, about God, but it's an issue of who you listening to. It's an issue of the attitude of your heart. Amen. And we can change this thing. I'm, I'm going to close this out in a second here. Amen. So there's rewards when you hear. Take heed for with the same measure or the same, watch the same attitude, the same energy you put forth, the same desire, the same effort. Remember, they continue steadfastly Fastly in the apostles doctrine and in breaking bread and in fellowship and in prayer. Come on, somebody. Come on. There's a reward. The more you hear, the more you receive, the more revelation. He gives you more revelation. The word of God says for the one who has, has what? Ears to hear more will be given them. But, but the ones who don't, it's get taken away what they thought they had. There's a scripture that's found in 2 Timothy. Glory to God. 2 Timothy 2 and 20. It says, but in a great house, there's vessels. Not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earthenware, or some translations say clay, 
some to honor and some for dishonor. But the scripture says, therefore, if a man purge himself from these, from what? The dishonorable vessels. He will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and meet or useful for the master and prepared for every good work. Amen. It says, flee also youthful lusts. Listen, 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 listen. I knew God would talk. See, see the, the, that, that I had to put that stake next to that tree. I had to tie that tree to that stake so that it would grow up straight. Come on. It wouldn't grow up bent or wicked or wickered. Amen. Glory to God. It says, because the tree was not mature, it's still a youthful tree and it's still soft. Scripture says in verse 22, flee also youthful lusts. See, when you don't know, when, when, when a person's immature in God, they listen to anybody. They don't, they, they think, oh, this is God over here and that's God over there. And, and somebody mature say, what is this drama? What is this junk? Sit up there. I mean, laugh. This is comedy. <laughs> it says, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for the word today. We thank you for those who had ear to hear. We thank in, in that, that, Father God, that will abide in your word. They will continue in your word. Father, we thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, glory to God, that your people sat attentively to hear that they might see in the name of Jesus, that they might know the truth and the truth will make them free. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come against, Father God, any, any word, any uh, false prophecy that's been trying to lodge itself in the lives of your children. We rebuke the devil on every hand. We bring to naught. We refute all these various arguments and we bring them to suggestion, to subjection to the obedience of Christ. For we don't warfare, hallelujah, carnal warfare, but ours are mighty. And we pull down strongholds, glory to God, of deception, strongholds of, that brings ignorance, strong, strongholds that bring unbelief. We rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that we are a strong church. We're a strong people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father God, for your truth sets us free in Jesus' name. Perhaps there's someone out there, praise the Lord, hallelujah, that have never received Jesus Christ as their Savior. Amen. We want to give you the opportunity today, glory to God, to believe on Jesus as your Savior. Hallelujah, glory to God. You know what we're seeing on the YouTube and on Facebook and all this stuff, this is just a manifestation of the time that the, that the, the, that the Bible, the more sure word of prophecy tells us about. In the last days, it tells us there's going to be false prophets. It tells us in the last days, glory to God, there's going to be folk coming preaching, but they, they're inwardly they're ravening wolves. Come on, they're going to be coming in sheep clothing. Praise God. Some of them come. The only, only thing that they're designed to do is to separate you from your money. Really, it's designed to separate you from the word of God. Come on, somebody to have you believe in some crazy stuff. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But 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 if you but but perhaps you're out there. I didn't want to go off. I want to get back to where I want to do. I want to deal with some souls. Perhaps you're out there. and You've never received Jesus Christ as your savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus, he died. On Calvary's cross, he bled. Amen. The Bible says where there's no shedding of blood, there's no remission. Hallelujah. So he shed his sin, his blood, and he was sinless. Amen. And he was in the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea for three days. And after three days, the Holy Spirit rose them up from the dead. Amen. Glory to God. Now, if you believe those things, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That Jesus Christ, amen, came to save you. He came to deliver you. He came to set you free. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. You know, receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior is the most important decision that you can ever make. You can't make it. I'm going to be honest with you. You, you look, look at what's going on. You can't make it by yourself. Amen. It never was intended for you to make it by yourself. Amen. Glory to God. God wants to help you. 
So if you believe what I just told you, glory to God, why don't you, you there, I want you to, to, to pray this prayer with me. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that if you shall confess with your mouth, amen. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God uh, hath raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. A amen. Glory to God. Thou shall be saved. The Bible says that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What does that mean? That means we're not telling you to think about what I'm praying, but you got to actually open up your mouth and say what I'm going to be asking you to pray with me. Amen. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. You ready? Praise God. Here we go. Just pray this prayer out loud. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I mean, beloved, I want to let you know that the moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of his word instantly comes to pass in your spirit. So right now, you are born again. The Bible says he who is in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Now, I want to suggest something to you. Amen. Glory to God. Now that you're born again, you, you need to become a disciple. You need to, amen, glory to God, get yourself, amen, in church. Amen. Glory to God. I, now, we're in Riverside. This is where we are. We're in Riverside, California. We're on a street called Wood Road. We they call this they, they call this area Mead Valley. We would love to have you, Amen, as a member. We would love to, Amen, glory to God, to teach you the word of the kingdom. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But if you can't make it here, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Amen. Go to church somewhere. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get yourself in church. Glory to Jesus name. Get in a church. Glory to God, where they're teaching, where they're not telling you about dreams, where they're not just telling jokes about stuff, where, where they're not just in a hurry to get you in and get you out. You get somewhere where you can sit down and be taught how to live this word in your life. Glory to Jesus name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. In a moment, praise God. First lady. Amen. She's getting ready. Amen. Yes. To put me some music on and she's going to put some things on the screen for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Because you're getting ready. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bring it down. Bring the volume down a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Just a little bit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. On the CD player. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. She's getting ready to put something on the screen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's offering time. Amen. We want to thank God. Amen. Glory to God for all those. Amen. To give into this ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. To help us. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're endeavoring to build. We're endeavoring to expand. We're endeavoring. Amen. To take care of. Glory to God. The things that God have, wants us to take care of as he has planted us in this community. Amen. We're looking for glory to God. We, of course, our congregation. Amen. We expect you to keep continue to give. We expect you to continue to tithe. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus to help us. Glory to God. During this to, 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 to help us to build. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank God for those who've been faithful over this whole year. Glory to God. You are a champion. You are a giant. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We want to thank God for you. Praise God. But we also need partners. We need some other. We need additional help. We need partners to help us, glory to God, to give. Amen. With this endeavor. Amen. Glory to God. We have submitted to the city of Riverside. Glory to God. 
plans, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. And so we want you to, to give with us. Now, I want, as you're giving, glory to God, I want to pray over your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, glory to God. We thank you for those that are giving right now. We thank you for the tithers. We thank you, Father God, that those that are giving online, glory to God, that's right. There's two different ways you can give, glory to God. Hallelujah, you can give, amen, for the post office. You can mail it into BRC, P.O. Box 8977. Moreno Valley, California, 92552 is on your screen. That's BRC, stands for Bethesda Revival Center. P.O. Box 8977, Moreno Valley, California, 92552. Also, you can go online, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, to our website, to www.brcchurch.org. Glory to God, that's one, once again, that's www.brcchurch.org in the name of Jesus. And we thank God for every one of you. We thank God for partners. We thank God for your giving. We give God the praise. Come on now, let's praise God while you're giving. Hallelujah. Father, we bless these offerings right now. In Jesus' name, give us wisdom to use them for, your, for the furtherance of the ministry, the upkeep God, to continue preaching. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. The next voice you hear will be our own First Lady. Amen. First Lady, co-pastor, Renee Sessom. Praise the Lord. I'm First Lady Renee Sessom, and I want to thank you again for joining us today in our service. Our weekly announcements are as follows. On Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we have Bible study on Facebook and also at 8.30 p.m. on uh, YouTube. Wednesday at 12 noon, we have prayer, and Friday at 7 p.m., we have prayer. If you would like to submit a prayer request, please call area code 951-264-6681. Once again, that's area code 951-264-6681. Thank you and have a blessed week. God bless you.